Hey everyone, this is the book we're going to be going through today. This is the Final Fantasy Ultima Archive. This one is the first volume. It goes through Final Fantasies 1 through 6. I really do enjoy this book. It you know, goes through a lot of different things. It uh, has pages on the art, the story, characters, uh, the world, monsters, and then a bunch of like little extras that are also in here. It's really cool. I, I like how it gives like all the different ways that the game was released. It shows you the box art for a bunch of these. It shows you kind of how the logo changed throughout the different releases. It's really cool. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about each of the games, and like not too much. But uh, yeah, here's the first Final Fantasy. I really love this artwork. It looks so cool. Uh, one thing about this game, this was one of the first RPGs I ever played. And, you know, it kind of got me into the genre right away. Uh, my brother, for some odd reason, uh, loves this game more than anything in the entire world. And accuses every other game of basically trying to copy this and essentially stealing from it. Which is a little... it's a little stupid. But, whatever. One thing I want to point out, I don't know why they put the world like this. So they just have this huge gap in between the two parts of it. But, whatever. Uh, so the story for Final Fantasy, the first one, wasn't really all that amazing or groundbreaking, and kind of the main characters are sort of forgettable, but this did lay the groundwork for a lot that would come in the future for the series. So, yeah, I mean, just all of this artwork in here is, looks really cool. And, see, this is one part that I don't really think I needed to be in here, just... But it's fine. I mean, it can be in here, but it, it's one of the things, like, I didn't really need it to be in here at all. So, now we move on to the second one. Uh, I want to like this game, but I, I just don't. Um, it's It did do some things, you know, it, you had more uh, memorable main characters. I just really hated the leveling system in this. I still don't fully understand it, even though I've seen it explained a few places, I couldn't really tell you what the hell you're supposed to be doing, to be honest with you. But it did move uh, move the story forward. You actually have main characters that do something now. You've got a lot of side characters that come in and out of your party for a little while. But for the most part, it's, I think it might have gone like too, uh, too off the rails from the original, but you know what? It's not in a bad way or anything like that. So this one wasn't released in the U.S. until much later. I played a few ROMs of it uh, back in the late 90s before they released the um, the PlayStation 1 version. And, you know, like I said, I really want to enjoy it, but it's, it's just not something that I like that much. One thing that was oh, I always loved about these games is just how, you know, they don't really need to be connected in any way. You can just pick up, like, Final Fantasy 2 or Final Fantasy 5 or, you know, 6, and you don't really need to have played any of the other ones, simply because they're pretty much standalone stories. That was one thing I really, really enjoyed. So, we'll get along here. And, oh, one thing that was really cool. This is, I'm pretty sure this is where Chocobos started out, because you don't get them in the first game, but you do get them in this one, which is sort of cool. But, uh, they become kind of a mainstay for the series later. And then you have Final Fantasy III, and again, I don't really have a lot of memories with it. Um, yeah, I, I downloaded it on a ROM. I had it for um, the DS for a little bit, but, you know, not really that long. One thing I will point out that's really cool, this is where a lot of the class systems came in into play that you'll see later on in a few of the other games, which is really, really cool, but sadly it doesn't get copied over very much anymore. They sort of moved away from that, which is nice in its own way, but it's kind of, it'd be kind of nice if they would like give you a throwback to it every once in a while. So yeah, you got a lot of the fun things in here, and. Again, the artwork for this is just really well done. This is a big contrast from like the the art that we saw in the Dragon uh, Dragon Quest book, where it was a little bit more anime, more cartoonish. 
This one's a little bit more uh, gritty, that sort of thing. Which is always kind of a welcome addition to something like this. Yeah, you will see a lot of these creatures get repeated over and over again. Which is kind of cool. And you'll get to see a lot of these guys again once we get into the summons. But, you know, this overall, I think 3 was a pretty decent game. I didn't get too deep into it, but it still added on quite a bit to just the overall series in general. And then we move on to 4. So this is a really cool one. Released as 2 here in the United States, which I think everybody kind of knows by now. 4 is a really fun game. They sort of went to back to a few of the things from 2, where they kind of have their own, like, they don't really have um, the ability to kind of, like, change class very much. You have a lot of, just a lot of the same elements from 2, but they still kept the leveling system, which I think is really great. So, yeah, just, wow. I, I cannot get over, I just can't get over the artwork on this. It's so good. Kind of makes me wish I could actually draw something like this, but again, you know, not so much. So, I really do love this book. It's, like, if you are really a big fan of Final Fantasy, I'm not that much of a fan anymore. I care more about, well, I care more about these six than I do about the other ones. Mostly, like, if the series stopped at seven, that would have been perfectly fine with me, but, you know, they kept going. Each one sort of has their own charm to it, but it's not really anything that uh, that I really need to play anymore. I kind of moved on to some of the other games, but for the most part I really do love this stuff. Now, just jump right on ahead to five here. Now this is a this is kind of a special one for me. Uh, mostly because, <laughs> mostly because I downloaded this one on ROM, and I actually was able to find one of the ones that was like fully translated, which is really cool. Uh, this is a really fun story. One thing that I don't like about it is they just sort of bog you down with a lot of the uh, class system and whatnot that's in here. It's a really cool class system. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff in here that I just think could probably be avoided. Uh, you just see, like, the number of character classes they throw at you. And if you were like me, you didn't really use all of them that much. It was cool how you could kind of, com kind of like, customize and combine the different classes, which sort of made sense. But, um, it, it really wasn't anything special or anything like that. Unfortunately, like, we didn't get this one released here. I think they were worried about the class system just uh, being a little bit too much for Western gamers. Kind of the same way that they... They probably thought the same thing with uh, 3 as well. Just, you know, if we give uh, Western players this, they're just going to be overwhelmed, and they're not really going to want to do it. At least not want to play it. The RPGs weren't really that... Um, weren't really as uh, well thought of as they were back back in the late 90s and whatnot, so this kind of did did a, did a lot better job of actually like introducing RPGs to people. It kind of simplified them a lot and just made it a lot easier to play them. So we can jump to 6 here. Final Fantasy 6 is actually my favorite out of all of the series. It's either 6 or 7, I can't always tell which one I like more, but 6 did an awful lot that I really, really liked. Again, the artwork is just absolutely wonderful in this book. So just the story of 6 was absolutely amazing. And also, like, the world that they created for it was really cool. This really marked, like, the major turning point where they went from... Uh, more of a medieval fantasy into, like, almost a full steampunk world. It, it was really kind of cool. They had been sort of building up to that, so 4 had a lot of those elements. 5 had even more, and this one just went full on with it. One thing I thought was a little bit crazy was that they didn't have more airships in this than, you know, they did in at least 4, and 
you know, that was something that was a little bit weird, but, you know, it was kind of, kind of a nice way to move the story along when it did. Just the characters in this, there were a lot more of them, and they were much more memorable than a few of the other series. Five just had, like, a few main characters, and then a whole bunch of memorable side characters. But six had just, just a whole bunch of characters that you could get to know, and really enjoy playing with and also let you have like multiple parties and whatnot it was really really great but yeah that's pretty much all that i wanted to say about this if you are like a huge fan of the series as i said earlier this is definitely a great book to get i really do recommend it so we're just gonna go ahead and close out here so that's pretty much the book, guys. This is a big, sturdy uh, hardcover book. The second volume is coming out soon. There's also going to be a third volume as well. Anyway, I hope you guys liked it, and you know, let me know what you think in the comments below. Have a great day, everyone.